I think about it a lot and it's almost an obsession but not quite there yet uh, but I'm sure it will it get there it's gotten there sometimes where I train way too much but I think about it all day and I think about how to get better it's one of the main things that goes through my head how do I squat more and actually I don't really think about squatting more because I think about my main problem and that is how do I squat pain free what's wrong with my movement pattern um, my elbow is a problem my knees a problem but I'm still finding ways to work around it because recently I have been squatting and I have been making some small progress and I'm actually quite happy because now I can put the bar on my back how do I get better what's causing the pain these are things that I think about as well because I'm a coach I'm a trainer and when working with other people, other people have different issues. They don't want to be powerlifters, but they do want to get stronger. They do want to look better, and a big and they want to not feel any pain or not have the nags of paining, the pain that's caused by old age and overuse. And the thing that I think about is what is it that they do all day that makes them so messed up? What makes their joints hurt? What are they doing? What pattern is created? And over the years, I've been able to recognize the way people move and get a sense for why people have issues and it's definitely something that doesn't come overnight you can't just read a book you can't just study a certification it takes years of experience one example is the feet straight right how important is that your feet need to stay straight in the squat and as I've been getting more and more in powerlifting I've seen some guys squatting and they're getting strong and you know I've been following uh, Greg Knuckles lately with his articles and he's been posting some videos and he squatted, he did a pause squat with like I think 585 or something. It was freaking crazy. I mean, sure he's a bigger guy, but still, I mean, anyone who can squat that much and make it look that easy is just crazy. And But his feet are turned out a lot, you know. I'm not Greg Knuckles, I'm not his size, but, you know, he seems to be doing something right. He's been able to get stronger, so I kind of learned from the people that are doing it. When people say you can't squat or you shouldn't deadlift or benching is bad for your shoulders, you have to think about kind of like how far that person has gotten. Because there's always, there's always going to be scrapes and pains, but a lot of the time who they learn their information from isn't really ideal. And also another thing too is that people just don't take the goal very seriously and they don't try to find ways. Like since I, I do take powerlifting fairly seriously, it's, a very, impor it's very important to me. I try to figure out how I can get better, how can I get stronger, and how can I keep doing this my whole life because I have a long-term view of this whole thing and I want to get better because I want to be lifting like this forever. So I learned not to train. I stopped doing double days because double days are not something that's conducive to long-term training. Maybe at some point I will do a double day, like if I'm not able to finish my workout, I might have to fit some other things in, but the idea of a double day working out twice a day just doesn't seem realistic long-term. But I also think about how do you get that high, that high from, man, that, the high from a PR, that high from a not hitting a 90% or 95% and making it feel easy, making that progress of strength. That's that powerlifting high, that strength high, and I just, uh, that potential or possibility of failure and the weight crushing you and you snapping something and then overcoming it. That is the high that I look for. And I wonder if that's what you look for in powerlifting and strength training. Because if you don't, I don't think it's fun. It's not, I mean, I'm just presupposing this or I'm making an assumption about myself that it's that bit of fear, that failure, and then overcoming it that makes you so high, so euphoric. When you get underneath the bar and the weight is heavy and you know that there's a risk of failing, like the probability of failing is higher than usual, not high, but higher than usual. Let's say on any lift, you could pretty much have a 90%, 100% chance of making it. But then on a certain weight for a certain lift, you have about maybe an 80% chance or a 70% chance or maybe a 50% chance. And knowing that, that whatever that is, because you can't really calculate, you just have a sense. It's that fear, that kind of, uh, that, that, that chance of failure and then overcoming it that's amazing. It's using fear as your friend. A friend of mine has recently started a squat and he's just getting into it. He's basically 185 pounds pretty you know pretty lean working out pretty strong guy it's got really good biceps and arms for, for sure and he's basically basically squatting 135 pounds and it's wobbly and I just told him you know really what squatting and deadlifting is what I learned is it's just 
getting big balls. It's all about having big balls. I don't know what else is there. I mean, you know, the fear of snapping your back on a deadlift was one of my initial fears. That the the fear of your knee freaking caving in or you're hurting your back on a squat. You know, these are things that are real. But then having the balls to take your entire body and overcome overcome it. And that's why I love it. It's a destructive love because the chance of failure and you beat the shit out of yourself so you get stronger. Uh, those are some thoughts. Thanks for watching.